Six seasons, 86 episodes, multiple awards, and several fantastic business lessons. Let's jump right in at number one. Cash is king. You've probably heard the saying before, and before you think we're advising you to do underhanded cash deals, hear us out. It's no secret that Tony does well financially, and part of the reason is because he has cash flow from small businesses that generate quick cash. A pizza restaurant, for one, where you make pizza, and you exchange the pizza for cash. You're not sending an invoice out for a pizza that needs to be paid in 30 days. It's instant. Of course, there are upfront costs, but once the door is open, Open, you start generating business right away. Number two, follow the same rules you expect others to. Aluxers, you've probably had a boss that always leaves work early, arrives late, and sets a poor example. So often, leaders play by their own rules but are sadly setting a shitty example for their employees. Even the subtle cues are picked up by staff and it filters down from the top to bottom. We're not saying that Tony set a good example. In fact, he reinforces what a boss shouldn't do, and that is so often how lessons are learned. He used to often refer to Christopher Moltisanti's drug habit, but he was guilty of that too. He was very impulsive and quite arrogant at times, all qualities that a good leader should not have. If you'd like to be a great leader, we have many videos with great advice to be that leader. Just be sure to subscribe to our channel. Number 3. Have Empathy we're often led to believe that in business, one must be ruthless and hard, but having empathy doesn't take away from good business. Some might disagree, but we believe that very often, Tony handled other people or staff issues with insight and level-headedness. Now, we can't say he had the same grace with his family all the time, but that leads us to our next point. Number 4. Everyone has flaws Tony knew he had anger issues, and he did go for therapy to help himself. Granted, he did give up on therapy more than once, but who hasn't? But he kept going back. Just because you're a leader or at the top of your game in business doesn't mean you're flawless. There is always something to fix, something to improve on. Number 5. Mistakes Have Consequences Tony Soprano once said, There's an old Italian saying, You f up once, you lose two teeth. Well, you probably won't lose two teeth every time you make a mistake, but in business and in life, when you mess up, there are repercussions. So learn from them, fix them with dignity, and don't play the blame game. Number 6. Create the Illusion of Control in the beginning, Corrado Jr. Soprano, Tony's uncle, is head of the family. This doesn't last long, though, as Tony is rather smart at making Jr. believe that the orders he is giving are his own. Meanwhile, they're actually Tony's. Aluxers, very often in business, you get a client that comes up with a crappy idea and you know it's never going to work. So you manage the client in such a way they change their idea but credit themselves with a new concept. By doing this, your client will see a return on investment and everyone is happy. Number 7. Be Decisive it was once said on the show, more is lost by indecision than by wrong decision, and that is spot on. Tony Soprano dealt with problems swiftly and with decisive action. He gave warnings where needed, but he didn't beat around the bush when something was really hopeless. He was a straight talker, and in business, you need to be direct and clear in your instructions, vision, and goal, so everyone is on the same page. Number 8. Have Old School Values Tony has major respect for the generations that came before him. He understands and appreciates the journey they took to make a success of it. He tries to encourage loyalty, the importance of family, and taking personal responsibility. But like in any family, it often falls on deaf ears. Or you don't truly understand the value until you become a parent yourself. But Tony also realizes that although one always respects one's elders, they don't always know better, which is why he subtly encouraged Junior to make different decisions, letting him believe they were his own, like we mentioned earlier. Number 9. Understand Your Team's Abilities any good boss or leader is in tune with their staff's strengths and weaknesses. They encourage them to work on their weaknesses and allow their strengths to shine through. 
Christopher Moltisanti is a prime example. Hot-headed, not a team player, and hard to trust. Tony knows all of these flaws and decides to mentor him. Eventually, it doesn't work out and he detaches himself from the situation. As hard as that may be, there will always be times in business when you choose to fight for someone or something, or you choose to walk away and only you will know when you're ready to do either. Number 10. Be willing to negotiate. Being willing and open to negotiating is integral in business. Tony proved many times that he was willing to negotiate, especially in the later episodes when he began showing signs of ill health. He tried to find ways that would benefit everyone involved, so that nobody was left feeling like they'd got the short end of the stick. And obviously the negotiation examples we refer to are not linked to any sort of negotiation, where there really wasn't room for the other person to have their say without the literal fear of death. That is not how it happens in the business world. Number 11. Network often. Hey Luxers, even the Mafia must network to connect with like-minded individuals. It's no secret that networking is the basis for any successful business, and the Sopranos do it well. Sure, they might be hooking up with the next hitman or sourcing information about the next big job, but at the end of the day, that is still networking. Tony Soprano is the ultimate networker, but despite being really good at talking the big talk, Tony is a good example of just how lonely it can be at the top. In his words, all due respect, you got no f***ing idea what it's like to be number one. Every decision you make affects every facet of every other thing. It's too much to deal with almost, and in the end, you're completely alone with it all. Number 12. Your family and theirs are important. Behind every successful business person is a family that loves and supports them. And if you're a big boss, remember the same applies for your staff. Yes, you're paying them a salary to do a job, but if you're empathetic to their family needs and commitments, you'll find they'll be even more dedicated to your company or business. In The Sopranos, family is always first. Tony says, I don't care how close you are. In the end, your friends are gonna let you down. Family, they're the ones you can depend on. Getting a good work-home balance can be challenging, and a good leader will know and understand that if an employee's home life is good and functioning well, it'll lead to a more productive and focused work day. Number 13. Even at the top, there's someone to answer to. When you're a mob boss, you have to consider a lot of people in your dealings. When you're at the top of the company or business, it's the same situation. You'll need to consider your staff, your shareholders, investors, other directors and advisors. Then of course, you'll have to answer to the financial guys, and that can be daunting. Yes, Tony Soprano had his own agenda, but he knew he had to reel things in to keep everyone happy. However, as integral as it is, there's always room for fun. Like Junior Soprano once said, you steer the ship the best way you know. Sometimes it's smooth, sometimes you hit the rocks. In the meantime, you find your pleasures where you can. Number 14. Be brave enough to implement change. Isn't it so true that great things never come from your comfort zone? And as a leader in business, it'll often come up to push your staff to do better, be greater, and step out of their comfort zones. In every workplace, change is resisted. You'll get the, but we've always done it this way, retort. And it's up to you to call them out for it and keep implementing the changes you know are necessary. Tony Soprano was open to change, and we saw that in multiple examples. One example was the first season, when he called off a hit on the high school soccer coach who was sexually abusing Meadow's girlfriend. He left it for the police to deal with. And remember, change is relative, so be patient with your staff when you implement change, but only up to a point, and then be brave enough to ensure everyone adheres to the change. Number 15. Accountability is from the top down. Tony accepted responsibility and was accountable for his actions, unlike many leaders who like to pass the buck. When you've got a team below you and you're the boss, you're 100% responsible for their actions too. Customers don't care whose fault it was, they want the problem to be acknowledged and fixed. What you do behind the scenes as a boss in order to fix it are not the concerns of the client. So man or woman up and take responsibility and be accountable, and that attitude will filter down to your staff.
So Aluxers, what did you take away from the Soprano series? We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. And you stuck with us until the end, of course, here's your bonus. Tony Soprano's favorite book was The Art of War by Sun Tzu, which you can listen to for free with our partnership with Audible.com. The book is written as a Chinese military strategy, which can be applied to business too. We'll leave you with a quote from Sun Tzu, which rings true for the life of Tony Soprano. Regard your soldiers as your children, and they will follow you into the deepest valleys. Look on them as your own beloved sons, and they will stand by you even unto death. James Gandolfini may not be with us anymore, but he continues to live on thanks to his role as Tony Soprano in The Sopranos. Thanks for watching, Aluxers. We're so glad you did. And thank you so much for the support, likes, and subscriptions. Until next time.